<laughs> Welcome back to the um, Idle Swordcast uh, episode where we'll be talking about the premiere of Winners at War. But before we get into that, I just want to say thank you all for the crazy response to that video. I mean, it absolutely blew up. It's already the most viewed video on Take Walk Productions, and I'm super, super pleased with that. Um, if you're new here, be sure to check out uh, some of my other shows on here. They're very entertaining. Me, Sam, and Devin put a lot of hard work into it, a lot of love into it. So I'd love it if you check it out. Uh, if not, that's fine. I'm going to actually put together a trailer video that should go out sometime next week to give you a little taste of what's going on. But until then, if you're just here for this, that's fine. So we'll get into it. Uh, today I'm joined by, um, once again, John. Hey, how's it going, everyone? And uh, Chris has been benched for today. Uh, and taking his place will be Zach. What's up, guys? Because we can't get the whole gang together. <laughs> we'll, we'll get there eventually. We'll get there eventually. What? One of these <laughs> days, one of these days, it's all going to come together. But I, yeah. I've heard, like, there, you know, if once we bring us all together, it could, like, disrupt the balance of the world, so we're trying not to do that yeah. too early. Um, <laughs> not with the pilot, man, not with the pilot. So... We have to build, we have to build <laughs> the hype for it. Yeah, yeah, for sure. So, the Winners at War premiere... Um, I just gotta say, like, right off the bat, just watching the beginning, I was, I was feeling what Jeff was feeling, like, wow, this is really happening, huh? We're here, we're doing this. It it was, absolutely, like, yeah, it's just, you could, you could, like, almost feel, like, how epic the presence of all the winners on that one island was, like, yeah, it, it just, it felt like it was gonna be a good ride. And what really got me was, it felt like, and this is what I was really hoping for, it feels like they're all ready to just have fun. Which is mm-hmm. so nice, because so, so often you get these people who take themselves so seriously. But, like, it feels like everyone just wants to have fun, and I'm, I'm yeah. excited for that. Yeah, I really, like, I really like the atmosphere of it. It doesn't feel like All Stars was, where right. it just had, it was, like, a pretty negative environment. Mm-hmm. This, I feel like, I mean, it's hard to tell from just the first episode, but I think this cast seems more down earth. I mean, these are all now mostly a lot of three and four time players got mm-hmm. some two time players in there too but i think this time a lot of people are mellow a lot of people know what's at stake mm-hmm. and so they're gonna play hard but it doesn't seem like it's gonna get real nitty-gritty and bitter a lot right. like all stars did that that's my take on it well because it felt like with all stars i, I think everybody um like had pre-game alliances and like had expectations yeah. of like oh i'm gonna make it to the end because i already know who i'm working with but i don't think that's here I think they're all pretty like, nah, man. Like, I want to win this. Yeah. The only time that really like came out was when Sandro was kind of bitter at Rob for not telling her that <laughs> the Amber uh, he was playing this season, and then that led to Amber's vote out. But I, I think that's just Sandra being Sandra. I think we all find that pretty entertaining. Right. We'll we'll get to Amber's vote out later. Yeah. Um. I I also think that um because like everyone on this cast has won before. It's like a, it's they're a lot more relaxed. It's like okay, like you yeah. know, even if I don't win, like I still have cemented my legacy in Survivor. Like exactly, I'm, yeah. Which so, is it, it, exactly how it felt on Quiz Up when we had the winners versus <laughs> challengers thing. I was like, there's, <laughs> there's no real stakes. Like, yeah. I mean, there's less so there, but like, there, it's like we know who we are. We know what we've done. Uh, the money'd be nice, but you know. Yeah. After I after I played in Peru. And I won. It was just like, you know, I don't really care anymore. I already got that dub under my belt. So yeah. it I, I get I get the feeling that yeah. it is for them right now. Um that said, uh going into it, so because they started with the challenge and they were going right to tribal and that that was pretty nutty how it was like, Yeah, we're never gonna give you time to like make alliances before. Like you better start scrambling and scramble they did. Um yeah. I, it is so fascinating to watch these people who were like so laser focused last time like just like legit panicking like when i saw kim like collapse because she was like so paranoid was like, i was like i was Dude. like i like this is this kim like yeah. is this the person who won one world like with no challenge whatsoever who was like in the most opinion, chill person like in yeah. one world in my opinion kim spradlin to me and i will continue saying this throughout the entire podcast the rest of the season Kim Sprouting to me is the best player of all time from what she showed us in one world. Yes. And to okay. see her yeah. this season, just like 
totally out of it so far and just like seem not so like in control it's mm-hmm. so weird to see and like her on the outs of that vote it was crazy to me yeah. uh yeah i totally man. agree uh and to see like on the other coin on the blue tribe i'm not even gonna pretend to remember their names um <laughs> it's like sele and something else i couldn't tell um, you on the blue tribe it's like they're playing a completely different game it's like like rob and poverty aren't even the targets which is baffling to me yeah i was like honestly like rob is one of my favorite players of all time and this episode just kind of like reinforced that like mm-hmm. he's just he was he had so many great moments in that episode mm-hmm. oh yeah and the and the way he just worked everyone on that blue tribe i was like holy crap like you're literally probably yep. the biggest target in the game and yep. no one's even thinking about voting you right now. Mm-hmm. I feel like I feel like Island of the Idols spoiled us a little bit with Rob. Like, how much cooler it would have been in this premiere episode if we hadn't just seen him all of last season to see Rob back in action. Yeah. Like, of course, we're seeing him in the game again, but just seeing his personality all of last season, it's, like, not as, like, cool to see it again this season. That's fair. But it's still awesome because it's Rob, and Rob's one of the most iconic characters of all time, and all right. for a good reason. Oh, yeah. And, bro, the fact that he's, like, working with Parvati this time, Heroes versus yeah, Villains would be damned. I thought that was cool. I, I like that alliance. I feel like they'd be, they'll would be they do a lot of damage together if they, if they don't betray each other. Oh, yeah. Only a matter of Par- time, Par- Parvati's such a good player. That Yeah. Yeah, Parvati's great. I think, I think out of all, like, the big guns this season, like, all the big-name guys, like, Sandra, Tony, Rob, Parvati, those are the ones I would consider probably the biggest names. Mm-hmm. I think Parvati has the best shot to win it all again. I, I can yeah. agree to that. Yeah. yeah. I can definitely see that. Um so on on the opposite side of Kim where she was like totally panicked. Yep. Uh I think Tyson was also the same way where he felt very like sporadic and mm. like out of his element. But on the other side, and I I think I don't know about you guys, but I think the MVP of this episode was Yule. Yule so cool. Yule. Absolutely. I was my, like my first round draft pick, putting in the work. Yeah, because I was going I, honestly. I was going into this season like, okay, well, he did play his first time with the whole idol, like the super idol, the whole game. So maybe that was like allowing yeah. him to be very comfortable throughout the game, so he could actually sit down and like think about things without as much risk. But no, he's just like cranking out like genius moves by genius moves. I am blown away by Yule right now. This has reaffirmed his status as probably the smartest and most intelligent player in Survivor history, at least winner. Oh, yeah. Like, yeah. I, I was blown away by him, man. Uh, I mean, just... if you're talking about physics on Survivor, I mean, you're pretty smart. <laughs> That's big brain stuff. <laughs> oh, yeah. Like, he, he obviously he... did his research, too. Oh, yeah. Because so... the, whole, the whole poker alliance, he pulled that right out of his ass, and I was like, wow. So, fun fact yeah. about that. I, I follow him on Twitter. And he basically said, like, I honestly wasn't even sure how close that poker alliance was, but it didn't really matter because as long as everyone else thought it was super close, that's all that matters. That's that's how you play Survivor. I mean, that's like, what yep, it is right there. Yep. Perception's reality, baby. Oh, yeah. Brilliant. Oh, man. Um, and then, Kyle, you uh, you mentioned uh, Tyson mm-hmm. a little bit in this episode, and I wanted to come out and say this. Last, last episode, I was like, oh, I really don't like Tyson. But... This episode, and literally one episode, pretty much completely changed my perception of him because of the way he was betrayed. He, he was just like so much more human than he was in past seasons, and like how he was talking about how he actually like felt bad that he had to flip on Parvati or not Parvati, Amber and Kim. Mm-hmm. Uh, I, I have so much more respect for him. Like I, I'm actually like pretty okay with him this season. Well, I think I've always should... I've always been a huge uh, Tyson fan so it's always, it's a treat for me to see him again this season and yeah i pretty much agree with what you just said there it showed a more human side to him and i think that kind of gave us a deeper look into how a lot of the players i think see tyson they see him as this very social likable guy that doesn't really come across much in the cameras where mm-hmm. tyson's kind of just a dick <laughs> yeah right. a, a fun a fun one but nevertheless still one but i think we saw kind of the side that he presents himself to the other castaways and mm. I think that gave us a better in-depth look on how he won his first time. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Um, uh, in, in, in big sad news, uh, I was the one who took the first boot hit on my draft sheet with poor Natalie Anderson. 
which uh, I feel like kind of came out of nowhere. Mm-hmm. Oh, so this I... is why this is why you want edge points, huh? <sighs> no, no, no. <laughs> this is not. I, I'm, I'm against edge points. It was my, it was my family who was like, we should, you know, because they're not technically out of the game, and I'm like, yeah, but they're out of the game enough. Yeah, I agree. I think, I think that it is rewarding players for being voted out, which I'm not a huge fan of. Yeah. Um, opinion. Yeah, it was it was rough to see Natalie go first. Um, I honestly thought it was going to be Adam, uh, just because I don't know. I mean, Adam doesn't seem to be playing super sharp right now. Uh, yeah. I, uh, ugh, I he mean, didn't really play sharp his first time either. That's fair. I've never been a huge Adam fan just personally. I I feel like he lucked his way a lot to the win in Millennials versus Gen X. Yeah, kind I can of see was that. the result of a lot of fortunate things going his way. For and sure. he's kind of come off this season as he doesn't seem to be on top of his game right now. And I think that's going to hurt him he, yeah, pretty he, soon. Like he, he, he seems he too enamored. Right the he yeah. seems too enamored by the rest of the cast that he's not going to be like... he. I don't feel yeah. like he knows that he's technically amongst them. It feels mm-hmm. like he, he feels like he's under them. Which I think is going to... Mm-hmm. I think... Because I don't, I don't think yeah. Nick is playing like that. Like Nick... Is like, yeah, I'm a big fan of these guys, and Ben was like, yeah, I'm a big fan of these guys, but we got to play, you know. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah, Ben yeah. even talked about that in one of his confessionals when he was had yeah. that conversation with Rob in the first episode. He kind of talked about that, and I think it happened then for Ben. I think that was a realization moment for him that he is playing with them, mm-hmm. and that he's going to, in the future, kind of realize that mm-hmm. and make moves with them instead of like being enamored by them. Because Adam, like was like, can I be your Malcolm 2? And I'm like, don't be was, uh, Malcolm 2, be Adam 1. That was a little cringe, not gonna lie. Yeah, that I'll never was... be as good as Malcolm. And I'm like, uh, I remember when uh, he said that, when I was watching with my family, I was just like, well, you certainly don't look like him. <laughs> you certainly don't have the types. same play style as him, so I'm gonna say yeah. no. Also, Denise beat Malcolm last time, so... <laughs> yeah, do you want to take fourth? Go for it. <laughs> um, yeah, I mean... Denise also isn't doing as hot as I would hoped, but I don't think she's on my team. I don't think she's on my team this season. No, she. I'm pretty sure she is. Is she? <laughs> Wait, we gotta look. I, I think... Yep, yep, because... she is. Damn it, she's not... Yeah. I, I have a different sheet with my family, so I'm, I'm doing the same yeah. thing with my family. Yeah, didn't he sell the sheet? Damn. For episode one, uh, none of my people went, so I didn't lose five points. So you know that's really what it was about for me. Uh, I can I'm satisfied so far. Yep, Zach, Zach I lost, and Chris. I lost Amber. Yep. That that's a tough one. I'm honestly yeah. kind of bummed we lost Amber so soon. I was, because oh. I was the whole time being like, I think Rob's gonna fall early so that Amber can run. You know. Yeah. I had the same mindset. I and, had the exact same mindset. That's why I picked Amber so early on in the draft. I thought Rob was going to take a sword first two episodes. Amber would go under the radar the rest of the season and come out on top like she did her first win in All-Stars. <laughs> and you know and what? It just did not happen. That, that's you know what's what, funny yeah. now that I think about it? And not I, I'm, I'm trying not to reference Quiz Up too much in this, but um, it kind of reminds me of what's happened in Quiz Up's past where you or Skarn or whoever brings in a friend you take the bullet first, and then they just take off. You know? Champions versus <laughs> Ruby, yeah. too. Ruby, Ashley, yeah. Ashley, like damn. Uh, I'm the, and, I can't, I can't ever bring a friend that grows up. It's a curse. <laughs> Don't. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, but like, I'm, I'm just, I was really surprised by seeing Amber go so soon. I'm a little bummed, but I guess I'd rather that than Kim personally. Um, I agree. Though, I don't know how well Kim's going to do from here on out. She doesn't see... I, just, if, I don't know how she's going to recover. Um, I, I hope she does. I hope she does. I really do. Um, I think she's too smart of a player to not recover and go out soon. I think she's... I mean, from what we saw in One World, which is really all we have from her besides the first episode, mm-hmm. she's incredibly intelligent. She ran that whole game. She always she had options. She so, so... I don't... I don't think there was really anybody who disliked her. Of mm. course, Tro- Troy Zan disliked everybody. Mm. But I don't really count him because of that. And she won almost every single challenge. She's definitely physical. So, I mean, she's a huge threat. And if people recognize that, then she might be in a little trouble. 
but I just think she's too smart of a player to go this early. And so I was mm. very nervous that I would be watching her go in the second episode because it would discount my whole argument that she's the greatest <laughs> player ever. I, I, I still, I mean, Sandra went pre-merge in Game Changers, so. Yeah, um, that's true. I, I think Kim's going to be a late pre-merge. I hope sure. not, but that's just kind of what I'm feeling right now. That's usually it feels like that's when the big threats go is uh yeah. late pre merge. Yeah. yeah, like we saw with Sandra, JT and Game Changers. Uh okay. Jeff Varner, no. <laughs> uh, <laughs> let's let's not mention that one. <laughs> no, um or like um like Allie from HHH or uh Stephanie from Ghost Island. Anna and Korong. Anna and Korong. Oh, well, yeah. I guess so. That, that was a hard hey, I'm just an out for me. Fan, you know that. that. That was a hard. Hey, I mean, me too. Me too. <laughs> uh, Shout out to Anna if she ever watches this podcast. Yep. Oh God, Anna, please. Uh, if you need a yeah. husband in the future, just let me know. Yeah, here's my phone number. <laughs> <laughs> All right, maybe, maybe you shouldn't watch this podcast. Uh, I'll, I'll, I'll look. I'll put my name out for uh, Lauren from Edge of Extinction. I'll put my number out for her for sure. I don't even. Oh, oh, Lauren. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I liked her. Ah, she was cool. Uh, my memory of the last few seasons is very fuzzy. That's fine. Um, Edge of Extinction, like I always say, uh, you watch the first three episodes and then skip it to the finale because that's all that matters. <laughs> that is a fair assessment. Because <laughs> nothing and else I, matters. I, 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 didn't even wa- I didn't even watch Island of the Isles. I watched the first four episodes of the finale and that's it. I you didn't miss much. Couldn't get through it. <laughs> you missed a lot of I, I saw, I, controversy. I saw, the finale, I, I saw the finale and I was like, wow, okay, so a lot of stuff definitely uh, happened this season that I yeah. missed. Yeah. yeah. But, Enough about Idol of the Islands. I- yes. Island of the Idols, whatever. Uh, when is it war? Uh, who else do you feel like you were kind of impressed by this season? I think, I think uh, Sophie. I'm going to go with... I'm gonna go with oh, Sophie. Sophie, I think you her and Yule ahead. are working really well together. I can see them going pretty yeah. far. Uh, yeah. Who are you going to say, Zach? I love, so- I love Sophie in South Pacific. Me Sophie's too. one of, in my opinion, the most underrated winner ever. Hmm. I love Sophie. She she did a great job of manipulating Coach all season, mm-hmm. and you know I think she was great. But the person who impressed me the most that I actually have in my bet with my family is Ethan Zahn from season three. Yep, I think Ethan's I think gonna get at it. He had a great premiere. He had a great premiere. Yeah. He yeah. He had a great edit. He is a total winner's edit right now that I'm just buying into. I he, he set himself up great socially. He has the whole backstory. He has the social game. And I don't think people are going to see him as a big threat. He's aligned with like Robin Parvati, who and Danny. Will be targeted before him, and Danny exactly. I think he's the least biggest threat out of those alliance, so he won't get targeted early. He's strong. He's social. I think he has all the tools to win the game. What I th- do you guys think? I think Ethan, just from edit, is looking to be the person who steals a lot of the screen time and then goes before the finale. Well, I mean, he's on my team, so I, I'm hoping it's the former that's yeah. back. Uh, you know. <laughs> fair, fair. I mean, I'm hoping. I mean, Danny I'm not. Wins, I'm so. not. I'm not great at reading edits, which is kind of funny considering my major. But uh, <laughs> uh, I, I've never been great at reading Survivor edits. But I mean, it seems like he was doing pretty good. For me, once the merge hits, I'm usually able to like. Okay, I know who wins. Yeah, I, I think that's the same way with me. That's the, the same way with me. I'm, I'm trying to think of the last time that because. Uh, okay, I'm not counting him into Extinction. No one predicted Chris yeah. would win. Um, no one, yeah, no one thought that one. I knew um, Tommy was going to win by the merge in Island of the Idols. I knew last Nick was, was going to win. Time I was wrong, last time I was wrong was Millennials versus Gen X. I thought David was going to win. Other than that, I've been right every other season. Oh, last time I was wrong was Ko Rong, but come on. <laughs> yeah, who saw that one coming? Come on, my poor girl, Aubrey. Which, by the way, I have to say, I'm really proud of Aubrey for giving up her spot at Winners at War to give to Michelle. I think that's very sweet of her. <laughs> Speaking of which, Michelle, what a big premiere for her. No. Nah. <laughs> yeah, I was kind of upset kinda about she that. Was in it, honestly. I mean, she, yeah. She got like one confessional. Yeah. And it was and just like, like, I can't believe I got left out of the vote. <laughs> and I'm like, I didn't even know you were like, left out of like, the vote. You can, you can put, it, put it to the bank right now that she comes second. I could I could see that. Honestly, <laughs> I I was like I don't know if she's getting a poor edit because like she's not gonna do good or just because Jeff doesn't like her. You know I feel like it's could be both. Either one. Oh, bro! If Michelle pulls up the dub, like I, I say, if she wins, <laughs> if she wins, she fucking earned it. Yeah, I, I'm one of the I'm one of the Michelle defenders. I'm 
from the mindset that if you won the game, you deserved it, no matter what. No matter no, what sure. people say. If you won the game, you deserved it. And I think she, obviously she deserved it. She did what was necessary. I just think we were totally misled by the edit into thinking that Aubrey was the winner. So I blame the editors and the producers on that mm-hmm. one more than I, Michelle. Yeah, I mean, if but that can go wrong. I'm exactly impressed. Mm-hmm. I mean, that can go wrong. If it was like a 4-3 vote or whatever between Michelle and Aubrey, I can see an argument. But like, I feel like Scott and Jason were like the only ones who were like, "Oh yeah, we can't vote Aubrey. She's terrible." And <laughs> Daddy and, was the same. I, everyone, and, but everyone like vote else voted for. I think only two people voted for Aubrey. So I mean, clearly there was three. something we missed. Three, was it four okay. three or five two? I think it was. I, I don't remember. Oh no, it was five two because it was five, Nick two. and yeah. Joe that voted first. Yeah, yeah. Aubrey. So, I mean, if it was that big of a disparity, like obviously, yeah, like yeah. Jason and Scott were bitter, but. I mean, three other people and, thought Michelle played better, and that yeah, you know. And, and Joe was going to vote for Aubrey no matter what because they were close from the beginning. Right. Oh yeah. yeah. Nick was really the only one that was like a big shock. swing vote that voted in Aubrey's direction instead of Michelle's. Uh yeah. But I yeah I think that's again also my only thing about it's it's similar to Samoa but in a different way of. It feels less so of like Michelle or Natalie's win and more so of Aubrey or Russell's loss. Mm-hmm. But where Russell deserved to lose, like immensely. Fuck Russell Hans. Um, I, f- I feel like Aubrey just kind of got a bad jury. But, mm-hmm. you know, if you want to look at it very technically, she put those people on the jury, so. Yep. Blah, blah, blah. Um, yeah. Let's go back to the current season. I feel like it's right. controversial. I don't want to go into another co wrong rant. <laughs> Um, <laughs> I, I've heard it before. <laughs> yeah, um, I think uh, who else? Um, Sandra is doing all right. Tony and Sarah seem to have reconciled a- along with Sandra. Yeah. I have, I have one gripe with the episode. What's that? Um, it's kind of what you just mentioned. I thought it was a great premiere. One of my favorite episodes in a long time. Mm-hmm. My biggest complaint is that we never saw a conversation between Tan- Tony and Sandra. Not Tony and Sandra. Tony and Sarah. Yeah, we like, kind of didn't. Yeah, we kind of just they, they talked strategy, but we never saw like their big reconciliation. The first time they've like been in the game together since Tony backstabbed her and Kageyan. Mm-hmm. I really wanted to see them like put aside their differences or even argue yeah. out or some some kind of conversation between them, and we I, never really got that. I guess we already like we saw Sandra and Tony like reunite, and mm-hmm. so the the editors were probably like, okay, they get it. Like yeah. Tony's out for okay, making peace. Okay. Hey man, I'll do any any. Uh, additional Tony screen time is good screen time, you know. <laughs> Fair. Um, even Tony, if he's Tony's kissing ass. Um, <laughs> hey, I, he's entertaining while doing it. Yeah, yeah. Every. You, oh, you guys saw the time. the preview for the next episode, right? Yeah. If if you take negative three points because Tony gets medevaced, I'm gonna lose my mind. No, he's not. Tony he's not going to get meta back. Yeah, he's not uh, going because to because they, they said it. They did no. It's a callback to Kageyan because they had a preview of Wu climbing up a tree, and you're like, oh my god, is he like going to get meta back? So they're, <laughs> they're doing the same thing here. Like Tony's not going to get meta back. Oh, I can see that. It'd be yeah. funny as hell. Normally, it's, normally when it's someone not gets medevac, it's not happening. But when someone gets medevac in Survivor. What they always do is they don't show us who's getting who's taking the fall in the preview. Right. Exactly. Like they try to hide it from us. Like who's it going to be? Where if they show it to us, it's normally a false alarm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Like they'll show Joe's quivering hand, but not his face. <laughs> Moving right along. Um, do you think from Natalie being voted out so early that this is the beginning of Jeremy's revenge arc as a parallel to I can definitely see that. Sir? I, I think, can totally see that. I think Jeremy's going to take down uh, Rob. <laughs> I think Jeremy will be the one. But on the flip side, you could say Amber getting voted out is going to be a Rob revenge That's arc, true. too. That's true. We're having double revenge stories, bro. bro. <laughs> and it's only been episode one. The, the thing I noticed about Jeremy in that first episode is he was the only person to catch on to Rob and Parvey's plan at Tribal Council. Mm-hmm. Like, he was yeah. the one that started all of the whispers. He's obviously very intelligent. He won one of the most strategic seasons of all time in Second mm-hmm. Champ. Mm-hmm. And... If anyone's going to take down Rob and Parvati and all of them, it's going to be Jeremy. He's incredibly intelligent. Everyone loves him. He's a fantastic player. I I could definitely see him taking this all the way. Going into yeah. this season, I was like, it's really cool because besides Sarah, I think I like like everybody on this cast. 
Me too. So, like, I'm pretty okay yeah. with everybody. And then when I watch yeah. the premiere, I'm like, oh, that's right. People still have to get voted out. And yeah. I'm going to be upset with all of them. Every yeah. Like, I'm going to be upset that's with that's everybody. Uh, yeah, because like now that now that Tyson's having a, a a better season, I'm like honestly, I like everybody on this cast. Like, that's, there's no one on this cast I just like. I can't it's stand game changers though. Then when it's half the cast you like and half the cast you don't, and the ones you like are the ones that all go out early. Yeah. Oh yeah. Oh, game changer was. Oh, game just game brutal. Game what what Fuck a tough season. <sighs> yeah. Um, I I I've got high hopes for this one though. Like so far. I mean, yes, we did lose Amber, which sucks. We lost Natalie, yep. but I don't think those are like the heaviest blows so far. Agreed. Agreed. Um, oh, no. I think, uh, I think we can still recover from this. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And honestly, yeah. if we're doing an edge jury, they're all going to be on the fucking jury yeah. anyway, so it doesn't matter. What? Well, okay. I... So uh, just real quick, because I didn't see edge extinction. What's what's an edge jury? Okay. So an edge jury is once it hits the merge. Everybody who was on Edge of Extinction already um, will become the jury. So basically uh, the entire cast is on the jury? Yes. Okay. Except, Except for two people because they quit. Yeah. Uh, okay. Okay. So this is this is a little mega merge jury then, huh? <laughs> Pretty <laughs> much. The, the thing I hate of... Okay, Edge of Extinction, I have things I like and things I don't. Mm-hmm. I mostly don't like it. I, mm-hmm. I don't like the idea of people being able to come back into the game, no matter what format it's used in whether it's Redemption Island, Outcast, whatever. I normally don't like that. I think once you're voted out, you should stay voted out. Mm -hmm. But for this season, I'm not totally against it because that means if Tony goes out, if Rob goes out, if Sandra goes out, we'll still get to see them every week. Which so Absolutely. I'm not totally up in arms about it. For TV's sake, I like Edge of Extinction. But for the gameplay's sake, I don't. Yeah, I couldn't put it better than than that myself. Yeah, that's exactly right. If I was watching, it doesn't bother me super much. It does a little bit if somebody like Chris comes back yeah. in the finale and gets like a free idol. That yeah. pisses me off. Yeah. But, ugh, you know, it, it. Okay, if Edge of Extinction doesn't end up mattering this season and literally like nobody comes back and wins, I'm yeah. all for it. It's good. I'm, I'm all for it. Yeah. I want yeah. the person yeah. who wins to be someone who started on day one and made it to day 39. Yeah, never got voted yeah. out. If yes. you get voted out, you should not be able to win the game. And I will say, when it comes to those twists, I think Redemption Island is the only one that somewhat works, and I think it worked best in Blood versus Water. 100%. Pre-merge Blood Absolutely versus agree. Water is the only time I like any of these kind of twists. Yes. Pre-merge uh, Blood versus Water, Redemption Island was so fascinating every week when they had to go and see their loved ones. And I think something yeah. like that could work this season, too, mm-hmm. because they all know each other. Mm-hmm. But... Edge of Extinction, it's more recent, so it's fine that they decided to go with that. So, looking at the, just the premiere so far, because I feel like usually, when it, I think we've had, I want to say, like three seasons where the winner did not get a confessional in episode one. Mm-hmm. Um, and I believe that is Tina and Chris and Natalie White. Um, My girl Tina. <laughs> poor Tina. That was a different day. A different time. <laughs> um, they were too busy probably giving Colby screen time. Uh, <laughs> or Russell. Or Russell. In Natalie's case. Yeah. 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 Or in Chris. In Chris's case, uh, the four attorneys. Um, yeah. But I think looking at this, there I don't know who has a chance to definitely win. But Wait, I have. Who were the ones who didn't get confessed? Did anyone not get a confessional? I don't think anybody didn't get a confessional, but like I noticed, like they're. Some people didn't. The way that they had confessionals yeah. might have seen not grand. Kim, Kim Spradlin was invisible for the first hour and a half of that episode. Which worries me. <laughs> which that concerned me, considering she was my winner pick going in. <laughs> yeah. Danny was pretty invisible, too, which also concerned Danny. me. Until Yeah, until late on, she was pretty invisible. Um, um, Michelle was invisible. I thought Nick was invisible, too. David versus Goliath, Nick. Yeah. He, he, had, he had a good episode, but he didn't really talk much. He was kind of just going with the flow. Yeah, Natalie, or not Natalie, uh, Denise was pretty much only talked about in a negative yeah. way. Yeah. Um, that said... There's people you can eliminate as winners. <laughs> yeah. So let's, let's, let's think, who definitely does not have a chance? I don't think Nick has a chance. I don't, I don't think, think Michelle, Michelle has, a has a chance. I don't think Adam really has a chance. I don't think Adam yeah. has a chance. 
I don't think Sarah's got a chance because Sarah didn't really do anything in the premiere either. Sarah was invisible, 100%, which I'm fine with. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Potter's man. man. Uh, She's... I'm not going to talk about Sarah anymore. You you know how I feel about Sarah. Um, Wendell, I I may look like an idiot saying this now, but I don't give Rob a chance. I don't give Rob much of a chance. I give him a little chance just because I can see a revenge arc. Yeah. That's that's, that's what it is. And, I mean, I'm a little biased because I love him, but, you know. I love him too, but there's no, no way. These are all winners. They're not stupid enough to let Rob get to the end. I mean, sure. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I mean, but what, but what if he yeah. did? But what if he did? I would love it. I'd be, See, I'd be fine with it. Rob and Sandra yeah. the, well, and Parvati are like the three of them. Like, if they make the end, they win. And Tony. Imagine, I would put Tony in that group oh, yeah. too. Imagine yeah. if you will. Imagine if you will. A final three, and it's Rob, Tony, and Sandra. I mean, <laughs> I mean, could it, this season go any better? <sighs> That's a that's a perfect scenario. Right All right, there. hear me out. Hear me out. So oh, yeah. it's the okay. final three, and coming back from Edge of Extinction, it's three Malcolms. <laughs> <laughs> so Adam. So yeah, Wendell had a great episode. Um, I think, you know, he had one of the first confessionals. Um, he did have that whole like, oh yeah, don't I don't want to do the building thing, but I guess I'm doing the building thing now. Which is what everyone told him not yeah. to do, but hey, you know what? If it works, man, you got to build that social game. Uh, other than that, I mean, here we go. We're doing this, I guess. Yeah. Did in Ghost Island? Did Wendell have that like little like wheat that he put in his mouth that yes. he did this yes. season? Okay, I I didn't remember that. That's a cool thing, though. Yeah, a reoccurring thing. It, it makes him look. Cool. Yeah, it's a nice it's a nice little touch. N- nice style points. It's not, yeah, style points. <laughs> All right. Um, I think that's everything I wanted to say about the premiere. It's like I said, it's kind of hard to talk about this one because uh, there's so much going on. There's so much going there's on, but much. nothing going on. Yeah. Yeah. There's nothing like solid yet. Like yes, they've made alliances, but it's so hard to tell like yeah. what's actually happening. Yeah. So, yeah. any closing <laughs> any closing points before I bring out the draft sheet? I. I think that's all I had. Uh, one thing I wanted to talk about that we didn't talk about was during that second immunity challenge. I just wanted to say I think that was pretty pretty badass when Rob was just like pushing everybody over the uh, <laughs> the barrel. Oh, yeah. I, I was like, this guy's such a beast. Like you know, he's a tank. He's my, an absolute tank. My uh, my dad, my dad is this has this weird view on Survivor where he only knows like. Like, he only, like, he'll he'll see what's happening right now and just, like, perceives that as truth. So, like, Tyson missed the first ring, and my dad was like, oh, Tyson sucks at challenges. I'm like, I don't don't think so. I think think he's done pretty well previously, and he's been, though the first two times he's voted out was because he was good in challenges. Yeah. But, uh, you know, say la vie. Um, Other than that. The second time was more of his stupidity. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that's true. So, uh, with that, just to, uh, I'm going to tell everyone how, how we are on points. Um, currently, in the first episode, uh, Chris ended up with four points, Zach with 14, myself with 12, and John with eight. Oh, first place. And okay. in the second episode, Chris took 15, Zach eight. Myself twelve again, and John thirteen. So wait, what's is that cumulative? So or the, no? no, the cumulative score right now is in first in uh, in last place is Chris with nineteen. Uh, third place is John with twenty one. Second place is Zach with twenty two, and I'm in first with twenty four. All right, but it's only just begun. Very close. It's and it's, it's close. close. Yeah, yeah. So I'm looking forward I'm to the rest of the season. Uh, yeah. Be good. Everyone in the comments, let me know what you guys thought of the episode. Uh, we'll be back before the next episode. Well, we'll be back before the next next episode to talk about the next episode. So stick around <laughs> for that. Thanks for watching, and uh, see you on the next one. Thanks, guys. All right, see you. Goodbye.